Okay, welcome back. Um, the next talk is uh, from Boris um, Parak, and he is uh, talking about Rocky. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you can you can hear me. So, as I was al already introduced, I will I will skip that. I would like to introduce my my colleague uh, Zdeněk Schuster, who is also working on the Rocky project. Stand up and wave. <laughs> okay. So, uh, a short introduction for those of you who who don't know what uh, CESnet CESnet is is a Czech education and scientific network provider. We are a member of the EGI and we manage the national grid. Uh, as a member of uh, EGI, we are one of the participants in EGI Federated Cloud, which is an effort of EGI to, to create a federation of privately owned uh, cloud services. At the moment, we have about 20, uh, 20 resource providers, or I should say certified resource providers. Uh, and almost half of them are running uh, Open Nebula. The rest is uh, OpenStack and various smaller cloud solutions. For, inst for, for example, Greek, Greek CNFO. Uh, so what's the, what's the big picture here? Uh, in the EGI Federated Cloud, uh, we have an infrastructure that's uh, separated into s small blocks, and we are trying to use uh, open standards. So in, in the example, you can see that in the middle, we have the cloud management stack or the cloud management framework, which could be Open Nebula in this, in this case. And then we have uh, some connectors or some points of the framework we identified and which we need to, to make universal or to hide differences in between different cloud management stacks. So we have OCCI for uh, infra uh, virtual machine management, management, which I will talk about later. Then we have CDMI, we have information discovery, we have uh, authentication, we have accounting, monitoring, and uh, image, uh, image management. Uh, what has been our experience with uh, Open Nebula? Uh, at, the, at this point, uh, I will switch hats because I am a resource provider, or we are a resource provider, but at the same time, we are a technology provider since we are writing uh, software components for EGI Federated Cloud. So as a resource provider, as a site running Open Nebula and contributing resources to EGI Federated Cloud, uh, we can appreciate that Open Nebula is quick and easy to deploy, has very little overhead. You don't have to install various daemons or components on, uh, on physical machines. It uses SSH, SCP, fairly known and stable, st stable ways of accessing uh, hardware. Uh, it's very easy to administrate, easy to understand, it n not, too, not too complex. It scales well, f it scales well for medium-sized sites. So if, if you have tens or hundreds of nodes, physical nodes, you can very easily scale with, uh, scale with Open Nebula. It shouldn't be a problem to, to monitor, to deploy virtual machines. If you go into thousands or tens of thousands, you could run into problems, but this would depend on your infrastructure and configuration. So you would have to test whether Open Nebula is the right solution for you. And it also and it is also great for uh, very heterogeneous infrastructures and various hacks, since we are also a grid site. We have some very specific uh, grid requirements. We have some some software or solutions we have to integrate in uh, in order to to submit accounting or to to allow users to authenticate with credentials we provide to the rest of our infrastructure. So Open Nebula is good for, uh, for hacking, basically. You can make it do whatever you want. As a technology provider, we definitely appreciate that Open Nebula is easy to customize and uh, has incredibly flexible concept of resource templates, which uh, if you are trying to, to make software that runs on top of Open Nebula, it's very useful to have, for example, virtual machine templates in which you can uh, store information because you can extend virtual machine templates and include new new information inside them, then read it back. So that's a very nice, very nice feature. It's also uh, backwards compatible between minor releases, which is also nice since we don't have we don't have to release a new version of our components every time Open Nebula is updated. So we release one uh, one version when Open Nebula is transitioning, for example, for, from version 3 to version 4, 
or from version 4 to ver version 5, and then we can pretty much keep the software as it is. If we need additional functionality, of course, we can upgrade, but if there is no need to use the new functionality, we can use the old XMLR, XMLR PC or the, the old clients provided or libraries provided by, by Open Nebula. What is a li little bit sad is that uh, the developer documentation would need some code examples because uh, in the beginning it's quite difficult to understand how it all works and how I can uh, use libraries Open Nebula provides uh, in Ruby or in Java since these libraries are quite uh, low level and provide access to underlying XML. So some very nice examples of actual usage outside of existing clients which I can read and try to figure out how it works, it would be nice to have some uh, some additional documentation. And also something we, we mentioned yesterday during the, the hacking session, uh, it's sometimes difficult to uh, integrate adv advanced authentication methods, which goes a little bit against the first state, the last statement in the resource provider section. But uh, as I said, there are two different hats in one section I am developing something, in the other section I am simply using Open Nebula. So that's our experience, as you can see from the green plus signs, it's mostly positive. So going back to the, to the big picture, as I said in the beginning, uh, in this presentation I will focus on uh, virtual machine management or compute, which is the terminology used by OCCI. The rest, unfortunately, we don't have time for. Uh, OCCI, for those who don't know what OCCI is, it's an open cloud computing interface and it's basically a generic text-based boundary level protocol, which means uh, it's not specifically designed for, for cloud or for infrastructure as a service cloud. It's a modeling language in which you can model resources, uh, relationships between resources. So it can be used for pretty much anything, especially if you, are if you focus on OCCI core you can control doors with OCCI, it doesn't matter. You simply use resources and uh, somehow represent relationships between resources and it can be modeled in OCCI. Of course, since we are talking about cloud, we are using uh, OCCI infrastructure, which is an extension introducing some uh, cloud-specific features and uh, parts of the OCCI standard, and then we have uh, rendering documents which actually specify how OCCI should be rendered over the wire. I, at this point, there is HTTP rendering which renders into, into plain text. Uh, as I said, OCCI is designed with extensibility and you can basically make it do whatever you want. Uh, so it's usable for infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, service as a service, brokering, monitoring, and all that, N all those nice nice terms. Some of these are already in, uh, in development or in the design stages at the, at the pro protocol level. So th there are drafts of, uh, of standardized documents and hopefully will be released, released soon. To give you a better idea on how OCCI works, here is an example. Uh, I mentioned resources, so here is the computer resource, which is the actual virtual machine, for, exa for example, running in Open Nebula. Then you have storage resources, disks in Open Nebula, and then you have a network resource, which connects a virtual machine to the network. And then you, ha you have OCCI links of various types, which represent the relationship between resource compute and resource storage or resource, resource network. There is also a concept called OCCI mixins, which are used to extend resources. So you are launching a virtual machine, you have nothing to add, okay, just launch a virtual machine. But if you have a virtual machine which supports con uh, contextualization, you can add, in runtime, you can add the OCCI mixin, which will introduce contextualization support, and now you can provide the machine with uh, user data and uh, change it as it boots up. Uh, going away uh, from, from standards and EGA federated cloud a little bit, uh, the software component or the software components we are writing for, uh, for EGI or EGA federated cloud are called uh, Rocky or ROCCI if you, if you like to spell. 
and we provide a few libraries meant for developers, such as uh, Rocky API or Rocky Core. So if you have a Ruby application and you would like to introduce uh, OCCI support, uh, OCCI support via na native Ruby libraries, you can use Core or API, which are designed to be mainly client side. Core is universal; it simply represents the standard. It implements classes. Uh, API is uh, client specific; it implements uh, transport protocols, HTTP, some auth uh, authentication plugins, uh, which will help help you negotiate authentication with different cloud frameworks behind OCCI. And then we provide two uh, ready-to-use uh, end-user components, which are CLI and Rocky Server. CLI is a client. It has a very basic uh, shell interface, so you can call it from a shell or command line or and interact with different, different clouds behind OCCI. And Rocky Server is a server-side component used to introduce OCCI support to uh, frameworks, the cloud, cl two cloud frameworks which do not have OCCI support. For example, Open Nebula. The whole point in using OCCI is also, I is of course, uh, you can use different OCCI compliant clients and servers. So it doesn't have to be Rocky to be compatible with Rocky clients or, or Rocky servers. You can simply use whatever client that can talk or CCI, and you should, uh, you should be able to, to interact with, with these components. Uh, coming to Rocky, Rocky CLI, I won't go into technical details, but as you can see, it's a Ruby gem or a nat native package. You can, you can install RPM or deb, and then you can run, run uh, simple commands when you can tell the client to create something, the something you are creating will be, o uh, will be OCCI compute, it will be Debian, this is the mixin that will identify the operating system, the, the next mixin will identify the size, this is very similar to, to EC, EC2, the, there are flavors and, and uh, AMIs. Then you can specifi uh, specify some, some attributes, title of the virtual machine, some details, how, m how many cores, how much memory, that sort of stuff. And then you can, as I uh, hinted before, include contextualization, context attributes, public key or directly user data. So if you use cloud in it in your virtual machines, you can skip public key and just provide user data and inside with cloud in it, you can, uh, you can add your public key, create new users or do fairly complicated things with, with the virtual machine as it boots up. Once the virtual machine is, is already running, you can use the describe action to get some information about it. In, in general, you need at least the IP address since you need to interact with the machine. So you will get a long output from the command and one of the, one of the information included in the command is uh, how many uh, disks are attached, where they are, they are attached, how many network interfaces you have, uh, IP addresses of those uh, interfaces, some basic information about, about the machine. Then you can execute some actions on the machine, stop, stop, uh, start, resume, suspend. It depends on the underlying framework, whether it, it is supported. Or there is a OCCI discovery interface which can actually tell you beforehand what is declared to be supported by the server, so you don't have to do this blindly. And this is uh, somehow supported by the client, so the client will tell you, okay, this is not supported, so it doesn't have to contact the server a second time. I, uh, I can build the client in runtime, since it's written in Ruby and we use metaprogramming. So I build the client in runtime and then you have, uh, the model is basically represented in the way th how the client is built. And then when you, uh, at the end, when you are completely done, you can, uh, you can delete the virtual machine, which will tri trigger shutdown or whatever terminate uh, action is in the underlying cl cloud framework, and it will uh, remove, remove the instance. Uh, Rocky server, the, the more complicated component from the Rocky, uh, Rocky framework, it's a server-side implementation and it's built on top of uh, Rocky Core. So we are basically taking the representation of OCCI outlined in, in Rocky Core. And we are, ba we are, we are building a server-side uh, implementation of the on top of it. And it's a bridge between almost any cloud framework, which is introduced as a backend, 
with the world of OCCI, which is handled internally by the server. So the idea is that you can write a backend without a deep knowledge of OCCI. We can sort of push you the right way into the right methods and the right uh, return values, so you don't have to understand OCCI in depth to develop a backend for, for Rocky Server. We also support uh, authentication, plugins, and we have a few backends. Open Nebula is, of course, the, it was the first backend. It was originally designed for Open Nebula. It's still uh, the, the most feature complete backend. Then we started introducing uh, new backends, mostly uh, as a request from EGA Federated Cloud. Since there are different cloud frameworks and we already have a machinery to enable OCCI on them, so we are using this as a generic bridge between cloud frameworks and OCCI. Uh, from the last time, last year when I uh, spoke about, uh, about OCCI, we managed to completely redesign and uh, rewrite Rocky Server because uh, in the beginning it was basically a proof of concept application. So yeah, it worked, but it wasn't nice to administer. It was difficult to debug. It, the, pref the performance wasn't great. There was uh, hard-coded information inside, so it wasn't really fit for, for deployment. Uh, year after, we have a new design, new, new design based on uh, fairly standard standard components, as you see on on the on the left. Uh, we have uh, Apache HTTP server, mod SSL modules. Fusion Passenger, for those who program web applications in Ruby, is basically a mechanism to run Ruby applications inside uh, HTTP servers. Then there is the server, and uh, through backends, it can interact with diff different uh, cloud, cloud frameworks. Uh, the internal design of the server, although simplified, is, is here. So we have a bunch of layers. The request will pass through when uh, coming to the server and leaving the server. So we have authentication parsers, hooks, and then the core, which will access the underlying framework. We'll access Open Nebula, retrieve, retrieve relevant data, convert it to OCCI, make some modifications, smooth the edges so you don't actually see the platform specific details of the of Open Nebula underneath, and then render it and send it to the client. Through the system of hooks, the, the server is fairly, fairly modifiable, so you can add pre-processing, post-processing on messages. You can uh, add new authentication schemes, but in, in general, we are trying to delegate as much as possible to the underlying Open Nebula, for example, because we don't, we don't want to uh, do user management or uh, handle access lists or whatever. We are simply converting uh, the incoming request from OCCI into native XML RPC, for example, calls. So most of these authentication methods are just conversions. So I can I know uh, where Apache will give me this information. I will convert this, in inf this information into something Open Nebula will understand and send it to Open Nebula. Open Nebula will authenticate, will handle ACLs, will show you the right resources. So this doesn't have to be done in the server, which uh, simplifies things because we would have to mirror beh the behavior to to make sure that there are n there are no split brain decisions between the server and open nebula uh, so how can you how can you deploy uh, deploy rocky server you can deploy it on single open nebula or you can have multiple rocky servers on top of one open nebula if you need if you have uh, user communities which are very very different you need different configurations you can simply deploy m multiple instances on the same Open Nebula. This also goes to uh, the way that we delegate uh, most of the functionality to Open Nebula. So for Open Nebula, those are transparent clients. So we are impersonating the user coming to Rocky Server. So there is no, it's not a single user solution. The user will simply pass through the, the server and authenticate to Open Nebula with his own credentials. But what you cannot do is deploy one server on top of multiple open nebulas because we don't do uh, we don't do infrastructure management or load, load, load balancing or whatever. It's simply a different API, so we cannot choose which uh, which framework to uh, which instance of open nebula to access. We simply can pass the request. We also uh, added uh, uh, logging, debugging tools, and all the those nice things that uh, admins or operations need 
to actually make it work so you can install it re reliably, you can see what's going on. We have a uh, Logstash plugin that actually locks incoming requests in into, into Logstash, so you can see how your infrastructure is doing, you can search for uh, exceptions beforehand, and it's, it's quite nice to, to administer. And you also don't have to install it by checking out a GitHub repository, which is a big plus if you manage an infrastructure. So who is, uh, who is using uh, uh, Rocky? Uh, it's mostly, let's be honest, uh, EGA Federated Cloud, because they are the, the big players. They are pushing, pushing OCCI. So we have uh, end users, which are directly using uh, Rocky Client to interact with uh, EGA Federated Cloud uh, sites. Then we have external connectors mentioned mentioned below. Those are brokers or high-level applications which wrap Rocky client and then basically simulate uh, platform as a service or service as a service on top of infrastructure as a service through through OCCI. So you can, for example, use Slipstream or Catania Science Gateway to to create virtual machines without knowing you are creating virtual machines. You can sim su simply submit jobs or design some sort of a workload with uh, uh, comps, and it will be deployed in virtual machines on the cloud in the background. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, we also uh, have a Rocky Server deployed on multiple sites in EGF Federated Cloud, so each site using Open Nebula is using, using Rocky Server. And we have some, some Nagios probes based on, uh, on the Rocky client, also monitoring all these various OCCI implementations and frameworks the same way. So we actually have a demonstration that uh, this, this can be done without, without the probe knowing which uh, cloud management framework is behind that particular OCCI implementation. We can issue the same command and the pretty much the same response will be, will be sent to me. And I can create a virtual machine, can check the virtual machine, then I can destroy the virtual machine. And this is done per periodically as uh, part of the certification test and then part of uh, regularly run Nagios test. Here are some, some uh, EGA Federated Cloud user communities which are using uh, OCCI and in part, in part Rocky from large ones such as Atlas or smaller ones such as uh, PeachNode, which is a o uh, OCR uh, music score sheet reading in in uh, the federated cloud uh, environment it, it's available as uh, peachnode.com i think you can you can look it up and see some uh, OCR music so what's our roadmap for the next few months possibly a year we definitely need to explore new features which will be coming in OCCI 1.2, which is currently a draft and will be, uh, will be quite instrumental in helping us move forward because we had, a, we had quite a lot of input into, into the standard, clarified some things, added extensions, some things has been, had been reworked to, to work better in production environments. We would also like uh, like to add uh, monitoring and accounting support to to Rocky, since drafts already exist, but we don't have the tools to to use them or to allow you to interact with uh, monitoring or accounting through Rocky. We would also like to include some some new new renderings, because plain text is not always the best way to go. If you ever parsed plain text plain text messages, you know that's not the right <laughs> the right choice always. <laughs> Uh, and we would also like to rewrite the client based on user feedback, so make it more, uh, more usable, include some new, new features. Basically abstract from OCCI, and you wouldn't have to use keywords like resource and mixin, but you could say, okay, create me a m give me a machine with disks and network. So you don't actually have to speak OCCI to be able to use the client. So in a summary, here are a few points I want repeat it so thank you very much for your attention if you have any questions i would be happy to answer them okay any questions okay yeah. um just wait a moment please and how is the um how is the difference uh, going to an open nebula uh, with occi or going to cloud stack or maybe OpenStack? is is that different when you 
uh, when we uh, commu in EGF federated cloud, when we communicate between different frameworks. In most cases, we managed to uh, to, s uh, to smooth out the edges, so you actually don't have to know to which uh, which framework you, you are going. The biggest problem is at the moment authentication, because uh, OCCI as a standard uh, says almost nothing about authentication. So naturally, each framework adopted its own authentication and then communicates with OCCI. And the OCCI, uh, those OCCI messages are mostly mostly compatible. We can parse them and we understand that's okay, but we still have to authenticate which in case of Open Nebula is easy, because Open Nebula, the authentication is uh, done in band, so I simply send a message, Open Nebula will decide whether to accept or not, and then I'm done, basically. In OpenStack, for example, I have to go to Keystone. So the client has to <coughs> somehow detect or decide, okay, I received uh, 401, I'm not authenticated, but in headers I found uh, Keystone URI. So it's probably OpenStack, so let's look at the Keystone URI and let's try OpenStack authentication protocol. I will act, uh, run the old op OpenStack Keystone authentication protocol, it will return a token, and then I will retry the connection to the original <coughs> endpoint. This is most of the magic done in inside the client. So we are hiding authentication differences between between different different frameworks. OCCI itself basically works. Okay, thank you. More questions? Okay, nobody. Uh, thank you, Boris. Thank you.